यस सर गुड इवनिंग ऑल आज के वेबिनार सीरीज नंबर 5 सर टॉपिक है डिजिटल प्रोस्पेक्ट्स इन कोविड-19 आज कोविड-19 को हर छोटा बच्चा उससे परिचित है छोटे बच्चे को पूछेंगे कि कोरोना क्या है तो वो भी बता देगा क्योंकि हाल हम जिस महामारी के इस समय में हम पसार हो रहे हैं उससे वो हर किसी को वो असर कर रहा है इसकी जिंदगी उससे ग्रसित है या वो उसको इन्फ्लुएंशियल लाइफ में उसका जो है वो हर कोई फेस कर रहा है इसलिए कोविड क्या है उसे बताने की कोई जरूरत नहीं है और आज के जो हमारे रिसोर्स पर्सन है द लेजेंडरी मैन डॉक्टर प्रभात रंजन तो उनके नाम में ही सब गुण है डॉक्टर प्रभात प्रभात का मींस नया सवेरा जो फिजियोथेरापी फील्ड में एक आशा की किरण लेके आए हैं और रंजन को जो मन को प्रसन्न करने वाला तो जिसे मिलते ही आपका मन प्रसन्न हो जाता है तो ऐसा व्यक्तित्व ऐसी शख्सियत हमारे सामने है वो उनके जो नॉलेज है आज हम में बांटेंगे पूरी ध्यान से आज का जो ये वेबिनार है वो पूरी तरह आप लोग एंजॉय कीजिए आगे का परिचय डॉक्टर मेहुल कॉन्ट्रैक्टर देंगे गुड इवनिंग ऑल द व्यूवर्स वेल अ वेरी वॉल वॉम वेलकम टू डॉक्टर प्रभात रंजन सर एंड आई वुड लाइक टू कन्वे माई दैट ही हैज एक्सेप्टेड आर इन्विटेशन एंड ही हैज पैड इज वेल्यूएबल टाइम टू एडुकेट आर स्टूडेंट क्लिनिशियंस फैकल्टीज ऑल ओवर those who are listening and viewing this that in recent time the problems that the whole nation is suffering i would say the whole universe okay uh, so the whole nation currently if we talk about the india that is suffering from covid 19 corona virus disease 2019 okay that it is suffering it may not surprise me that in the next year curriculum you know the corona virus will be the part of syllabus that the physiotherapy in corona virus so it may not be surprised that the government of gujarat or government of the india uh, which so part over the college is running under the whatsoever the university they may include the corona virus as one of the disease and the physiotherapy of the corona virus in the part of the curriculum so all the viewers i would like to you know convey my message to all of you them that in such recent time as we all physios what all things we need to do see we know what is corona virus okay from where it has been arised what are the symptoms that we see okay but still we are afraid of that being a medical professional still we are afraid of that that what should be done so in that case the answer is there with our resource person dr prabhas ranjan sir that he will let us know what to be done so now i would like to request dr palman palman please warmly welcome our resource person and then we'll proceed further good evening to all the viewers myself dr pal charanya i would like to welcome our today's guest speaker dr prabhat ranjan sir sir has working as a physiotherapist in neurology department aims new delhi so he has completed his master in neurology from the government medical college nagpur so he is certified neuro neurodevelopmental therapist and expert in handling stroke patient so he has gained a rich experience of more than 17 years in this field so he has also organized many national international level conference and workshop also so he is also associated with indian association of physiotherapy delhi branch so he was one of the leader in the swaraj swaraj march for the independent physiotherapy council so it's a great opportunity for all of us to learn from the dr prabhat ranjan sir i warmly welcome dr prabhat ranjan sir and now i request dr prabhat ranjan sir to please proceed further thank you thank you dr pragya and dr prakash dr mehul and all the management uh, faculty of uh, vn patel medical campus as uh, before the start of this uh, uh, webinar we were talking that uh, dr mehul said it is a welcome back home it's like back home because i love to be there at uh, vn medical campus and uh, always always uh, 
are thrilled to attach with you all so thank you thank you for again calling me and uh, this uh, time of uh, pandemic we are connecting virtually but it is uh, by heart yes. though it is known as virtual but it is by heart by, by heart. full mind and by our soul so thank you again and i will start with the topic the topic which uh, is, uh, was uh, elaborated by dr mehul that it is a topic on uh, uh, covid and uh, the role of physiotherapist where we can have our role and uh, we can work effective effectively to manage this uh, pandemic so first uh, we go to the background and the clinical manifestation of this disease so i hope the screen is visible to everybody yes sir so covid 19 physiotherapy perspective i am prabhat ranjan as i as dr payal introduced me i am working in the department of neurology there as a physiotherapist so when we go to the background of corona then uh, the word corona virus this has been derived from the uh, latin word which is known as corona and corona means a crown or a breath breath you must have seen that it is a round like structure when people go for the funeral homage then we see that they carry that uh, uh, round bouquet that is a flower bouquet and there uh, you can see that the spikes are there it looks like that it is a spike and all that the flowers look like a spike and that is the same structure which is of corona and which has been seen microscopically when we see in the microscope the structure is like that only so it is a, a family which has been existing since long it is not that it is a very uh, recent thing though we are uh, uh, hearing that this name uh, uh, first time uh, because uh, we had not been uh, very much familiar with the word but uh, corona existing in some or other way because whenever there was a respiratory problem then there was a corona virus but the name was different this time it has been named as covid 19 and earlier also it was there in acute respiratory syndrome sars uh, uh, earlier there was swine flu swine flu also has the corona virus but that was not so contagious this time what we have got the the structure because virus is not a living thing we should know that people say that virus uh, will die or virus will uh, 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 destroy it is not a living thing it is a non living thing it is a structure of protein and what happens that when it goes into the body transmission is there then the transmission what happens that it combines with the glycoprotein of our body and the person especially those who are having the weaker immune system especially the children the person with comorbidities or the uh, elderly people these people are more susceptible or prone to get the virus attached or binded with the glycoprotein of our body and when this uh, attaches with the body the virus gets multiplying it gets multiplying in the body and then antibody uh, is uh, formed and the system of the body gets changed and then it attacks our uh, basically the respiratory system when it is in respiratory system then the virus will multiply but where as it goes into your uh, food pipe then what happens that due to the uh, chemical or acidity or acids present in our lot of chemicals are present in our stomach for the digestion and all that they what happens destroy that that protein structure is destroyed means the fat is dissolved that is uh, dissolved so it, it it doesn't multiply when it goes into the stomach or the food pipe as you know that uh, the transmission is uh, human to human and gen Generally, it takes around two to 
10 days in, for the incubation period, sometimes around 14 to 20 days is also there. But many of the cases, 80%, it has been seen that the, in 2 to 10 days, the virus get transmitted into the body of a subject who has been infected by this virus. And a uh, uh, lot of theory is going around as for the transmission is there. Earlier when it came in uh, existence, then uh, people were telling or the researchers were telling that it is not a airborne disease, but now it has been proved through number of researches that uh, it is a airborne disease and through air also it can also go into the our respiratory system and infect the body De basically it uh, uh, is in the form of the droplets uh, droplets when we do coughing sneezing or running nose, uh, nose is there or the droplets uh, goes in uh, lands onto the surface then that surface there the virus is there that structure is there for uh, depending upon the surface if the plastic surface is there then it may be there for two to three days if it is in air some particles are so light so light that it floats into the air for six to eight hours so in the um, uh, air you can, you can say that uh, those uh, particles are there for six to eight hours depending upon different surfaces different type uh, in wood it lasts for uh, one or two days uh, on plastic three for four days three to four days or on a surface uh, for one day depending upon the surface the lasting is there of the virus and at that time if anybody touches uh, his through his hand and then uh, uh, takes his uh, hand to the mouth and all that then it the subject may get infected with this virus so as i said that uh, incubation period has uh, is there and during the incubation period, it has been found that many of the subject goes asymptomatic. This is one of the clinical feature which has been seen in uh, most of the cases of uh, uh, coronavirus and especially in India, it has been seen. Now till now date, I think we have uh, touched around uh, 1 lakh 50 around we are near to 1 lakh 50 thousand of cases yesterday it was 45 thousand 1 lakh 45 thousand and uh, by today i think we will be touching the 1 lakh 50 thousand cases but the most important thing that 80 percent of the cases are lying into the category of a symptomatic category because they are not having the symptoms though they are the carrier of this virus they are carrying this virus and they can carry and can infect the subject. Those have the weak immunity, such as the people who are suffering with uh, uh, blood pressure, diabetes, or any other pathological disease in that subject. If this virus enters, then it can become deadly for them. So remember that it can become deadly for them, the person who are having the comorbidity. So we have to be careful because these patients are the uh, most uh, asymptomatic patients are the, the biggest carrier. And it is also a very lucky thing that 80% of the cases are falling to the category of asymptomatic cases. And the recovery rate, in, especially in India, we have seen that it is very high and it has touched around 41% uh, of recovery rate is there by Tomorrow we have yesterday we have seen that there was 41 percent of the recovery rate is there. If the symptoms persist, then the progression in the first week will be there that the subject will uh, complain of fever, non-productive cough. Cough is there, but it is not a productive cough. Vomiting, he may complain of vomiting, he may complain of nausea, he may complain of uh, diarrhea. So these are the initial symptoms which uh, the subject can have it, and in the second week then it again further progresses and when it progresses it uh, infects the respiratory system and when it infects the respiratory system the breathing difficulty is there chest tightness will be there dyspnea will be there and these things do uh, contribute in the acute respiratory distress syndrome is there then at that time when respiratory distress comes and when it becomes severe because it uh, can be uh, 
acute respiratory distress syndrome can be divided into three parts depending upon the partial oxygen pressure as well as fra fraction of inspired oxygen when it becomes below or equal to 200 mm of hg then it is mild other uh, uh, when it becomes to 100 or equal to 100 mm of hg then it is moderate and then below that it is severe kind of acute respiratory distress then what happens then due to this uh, ARDS that is the acute respiratory distress syndrome there may be the organ failure it may lead to organ failure because what happens that following acute respiratory distress syndrome hypoxemia follows and hypoxemia what happens due to that that there is a low level of oxygen percentage in the arterial blood and when that uh, percentage decreases the demand uh, increases to the organs and when then the part is failed then organ goes into the failure and the function is highly impaired of those organs especially liver kidney and the heart then when the heart will be there there will be cardiac arrest kidney then uh, a lot of filtration problem will be there Accum accumulation of uh, uh, waste products will be in there body will be swollen up so this excretory system will, will, will badly fail and this may lead to some other complication and then when it is not resolved, then death may also occur in those subjects. So when incubation is there, after the incubation, it has been found that many patients are insubtopatic. So here you can see this is a pulse oximetry and this uh, due to this uh, pulse oximetry, we can uh, check that uh, the subject is having proper level of arterial blood in them or not because it can be applied to the finger any part of the finger and the blood flow going through the skin that is uh, taken in account by the uh, sensor and then sensor gives here it is shown that 95 by 81 95 is the oxygen saturation level present and 81 is the heart rate it is indicating the heart rate so this way we can identify that subject is having the acute respiratory distress syndrome or not if the uh, oxygen saturation level falls through pulse oximetry below 90 degree then you can say that the subject is having the acute respiratory distress syndrome or we can say that arterial blood level is very low in the subject and if it is not treated in the time then it may aggravate and then other complication may arise due to that so when medical management is there physiotherapist should know that what are the basic things what is done in medical management when the subject goes into the apart from the drug drug is given uh, if some patients are uh, asymptomatic then normal drug is given like uh, antipyretic uh, uh, some form of vitamins that vitamin C or vitamin zinc and other multivitamins are given to boost the immunity of the subject with good diet and all that. Symptomatic, uh, symptomatic patient with mild symptoms such as fever, malaise, weakness and the general cough then at that time also the subject may be given those drugs uh, simply uh, antipyretic vitamin C and the uh, multivitamins these are the drugs basically given apart from them when there is moderate and severe type of acute respiratory distress syndrome then patient needs to go into the icu in icu he may require ventilation he may not require ventilation if ventilation is required then the process of intubation is there a tube is being inserted to track it to the carina so that the proper oxygen level should be maintained through the ventilator then extubation sometimes the patient needs extubation bronchoscopy is there done when the chest is filled with the fluids or other particles through them bronchoscopy is done this is done by the anesthetist then sometimes he needs oxygen level without any you can say intubation then a nasal flow oxygen high flow nasal oxygen is used through the oxygen pipe non-invasive ventilation is there tracheostomy when prolonged uh, intubation is there for the subject in the icu are uh, more than 10 
10 to 12 days, then a tracheostomy is done, a uh, hole is being created at the trachea level so that pipes, uh, that uh, ventilatory pipe should be attached to this, that trachea and proper oxygen, oxygen level should be maintained through the ventilation of the subject. Then sometimes uh, uh, due to distress syndrome, if the subject comes late to the hospital or then, then so he may face a cardiac arrest, then CPR is maneuver is run. And when CPR maneuver is done, after that, he needs to be intubated. So these are the conditions where we can, uh, we should know when the subject is in an ICU. And this, uh, these procedures are highly aerosol generating for procedure. Aerosol generating means that patient will cuff during this period and some of the cuff particles droplets will go into the air and they will be floating in the air. So these type of particle which floats in the air is known as aerosol generating procedure and in these conditions that uh, which I have mentioned the medical conditions here these is uh, that generating procedure is very high and the transfer or transmission of airborne is very uh, high and for the treating person also so we should take proper care as per the guidelines issued by the government or the hospital that how we have to keep ourselves safe also because here the thing is important that we should also keep ourselves safe in order to be healthy so role of physiotherapist we work in the primary health care facilities also and uh, we have the role of management of the admitted patient uh, with confirmed or the suspected there are two types of category one is suspected till the way till the investigation report is awaited patient is kept in a suspected category and suspected ward is a, a different ward and then when the case is confirmed he is transferred to the confirmed ward physiotherapists often work in the acute hospitals uh, such as in icu particularly the cardio respiratory physiotherapy focused on the management of acute and chronic respiratory condition and the aim of this is to improve the physical recovery following an acute illness with the airway clearance airway clearance secretion is very important so that that has to be uh, cleared and uh, according to the conditions it is said that these uh, according to this condition where the maneuver of physiotherapy is required it is being referred by the doctor because uh, treating uh, a covid 19 patient is a multidisciplinary approach it is not that only physiotherapy will treat it is not that only the uh, doctor will treat it is a team where the teamwork is there doctors are there nurses are there even the health care other professionals are there physiotherapists are there and there should be good communication among these professionals for the better outcome of the patient so we should be having proper knowledge to discuss and all that that what is uh, what can be done in this condition if there is required of physiotherapy intervention or not sometimes the doctor feel that not right now it is not the time to have the proper physiotherapy intervention we can make the patient stable in terms of other vitals because that is important Important. other vitals are also important to check and when a proper consultation arise is achieved then we can start the process of the treatment in the subject so the patient with the existing comorbidities they may be associated with hyper secretion or ineffective cups if associated disease are there like new neuromuscular disease are there if suppose MND is there then in that what happened that condition also respiration is uh, affected suppose gullian bear syndrome is there suppose myasthenia gravis is there these type of conditions may be associated with the uh, covid 19 and that time it become very difficult for the subject because already he is having a neuromuscular disease and he has been infected by the uh, corona uh, that is the covid 19 and it may lead to more respiratory distress even for the cystic fibrosis so we have to be very careful in these conditions and they need proper attention with uh, uh, neuromuscular diseases 
what happens then uh, intensive medical management for the covid 19 patient is there and when prolonged ventilation sometimes these uh, patient need prolonged ventilation and when then prolonged ventilation is needed then one thing happens in those subjects and this is known as icu acquired weakness icu intensive care unit aw is the acquired weakness due to prolonged stay in the icu it leads to the weakness of the muscles weakness of the respiratory muscles weakness, weakness of the upper limb and weakness of the lower limb and this also contributes more into the uh, functional decline in the subject and when the function decline is their respiratory muscles are not pro acting properly then uh, at that time physiotherapy will help in restoring the subject uh, uh, muscle activity so that if muscle activity improves then it may help in improving the oxygenation level and rapid functional recovery in the subjects with providing some exercises mobilization in bed mobility can be given at that time with some respiratory exercises breathing exercises and which may help the subject to have the better functional return and then it can help to come out of that critical illness so we are our role may be in providing exercises mobilization rehabilitation interventions to the survivor or critical illness associated with covid 19 critical illness such as neuromuscular discord disorder is there pre existing history is there pre existing history of diabetes is there pre existing history is of hypertension so these thing associated with uh, COVID-19 at that time our uh, uh, intervention physiotherapist intervention is needed then that may be helpful for subject to have a functional recovery to home. So as per the um, uh, WCPT World Confederation of Physical Therapy there have been guidelines issued that when and uh, when we can start the physiotherapy for the subject or when the referral is needed. So one thing is that if mild symptom is there with, with without significant respiratory compromise then at that time physiotherapy interventions such as chest physiotherapy interventions are not needed for the my airway clearance as there is a dry cuff and uh, the chest x-ray also doesn't show any changes at that time in terms of the chest uh, I think uh, physiotherapy is uh, not required as per the guidelines, but in terms of functional uh, rehabilitation or you can say that to maintain the functional outcome, some form of in bed mobility exercises can be given and that can be given with the uh, active exercises form that can be given into the active exercises form. When pneumonia sets in uh, with uh, low level of oxygen, and when there is no productive cuff and the patient is able to cuff on his own independently if he can cuff then we should give the feedback to the subject that if he is able to cuff on his own then without any chest physiotherapy maneuver we should motivate the subject to cuff out the symptom as a sputum for the airway clearance on his own because uh, as pneumonia is there low level of uh, oxygen requirement is there and the non-productive cuff is there then with good amount of uh, self-reflex cuff then we can ask the subject motivate the subject to cuff on his own so that he is able to do the things independently because it helps in maintaining the uh, muscle properties also because uh, when active exercises are done then the properties of the muscles are also maintained then mild symptoms and uh, there is mild symptom and pneumonia is there with coexisting respiratory disease like neuromuscular comorbidities cystic fibrosis bronchiectasis and current anticipated difficulty with secretion clearance here when there is comorbidity in terms of all the associated disease and he is having poor reflex of cough he is not able to uh, cough on his own and the secretion clearance is difficult then physiotherapy for airway referral airway clearance is required and here we have to assess that whether the 
only positioning can help the subject or the chest physiotherapy maneuvers like percussion like uh, um, chest vibration these are helpful for the subject for the airway clearance of the subject so we have to assess and then accordingly we can do here physiotherapy maneuver is required where severe symptoms are there pneumonia sets in then when the severe pneumonia sets in then here what I, that physiotherapy may be indicated particularly if weak cuff is there and production is high and pneumonia imaging under the secretion retention is there if retention is there then we can apply the physiotherapy maneuver and also we should stress on proper positioning of the subject for the gravity assisted airway clearance because proper positioning also helps in having the gravity assisted uh, secretion or airway clear and this helps the subject in improving the uh, vital capacity of the subject so patient displaying respiratory syndrome it may be necessary to provide treatment to relieve symptoms and improve function physiotherapy support is more focused on non-invasive ventilation there are two types of ventilation one is the invasive other is the non-invasive in invasive a uh, uh, tube is inserted uh, in the lungs and then oxygenation is provided through the ventilator here mask like structure is there and it is fully tight and the oxygen pipe is there and through ventilator oxygen is being administered but the there is no as such tube which will give the ventilation only the mask will be there and it is known as non-invasive ventilation and sometimes uh, it is very difficult to intubate the subject routinely because there is swelling in the tracheal system and at that time this non-invasive ventilation is very helpful in subject here you can see the picture that uh, the, how it looks this is the ventilator non mask like uh, uh, structure which is applied at the mouth level here is the oxygen connection this is the oxygen connection exhalation port is there and now this is the mask which is applied in this form so you can see that this is the way how the when the, the straps are applied it is strapped tightly so that air is not leaked out and when air is there here we can calculate the mmhg whatever requirement of oxygen level is there as per the requirement of the subject we can release the oxygen into the vent mask so that he can breathe nicely so it has been seen that uh, when we make to uh, make the, the suppose subject is having non-invasive ventilator uh, applied and we have to make the muscle work also efficiently so inspiratory muscles are there and the expiratory muscles are there these also helps uh, in uh, uh, subject in having good proper ventilation with what happens that when the subject is in sitting position then the chest is expanded the alveoli are expanded and then patient can have a better inhalation and better uh, vital capacity so sitting upright position has been indicated in these subjects and it should be in such a manner that his muscles should be very relaxed and should be working very efficiently so upright head is needed shoulder and back is supported nicely and he should be not slouched he should be not slumped he should be sitting upright with his upper limb on the thighs so that the muscle here are relaxed and the both the foot should be on the ground here you can see it is a slump position where the subject has a very weak muscle work and we can see through the mus uh, that one video i will show of a test that is known as sniff test and the sniff nasal inspiratory pressure is there which is, which has been seen so why this posture is being recommended upright position not the slump position so we can see this through this video that how the uh, there is a sniff nasal inspiratory pressure can be measured in a subject
Once you have selected the correct nasal probe, the device is clear. attach the nasal probe to the device. Now, switch the device from off to snip. Wait until the screen of the device shows a zero. Attach the nasal probe to the Once this is complete, the device is ready as to be performed. Your breathing capacity will be tested using the SNF nasal inspiratory pressure test or SNF. The SNF measures the amount of air that you can inhale via your nose. A sharp short First, you will select a proper nasal probe. If the nasal probe fits properly, I will ask you to sniff as hard as you can. This test will be done 10 times to ensure that we have measured your best attempt. Have you ever had any type of nasal surgery? Are you experiencing any nasal congestion? Have you had a deviated nasal septum? I will record that in your documentation for today. Everyone has left the room now, so it's just the two of us. This way, you won't be distracted during the test. Your position during the test is extremely important. You need to be sitting up straight with your back against the back of the chair. Your shoulders should be down and your eyes should be open. Both of your feet should be on the floor and your legs should be together. First, we're going to find a nasal probe that fits you comfortably. This one is too big. Great, this one seems to fit. Now, one at a time, I want you to close one of your nostrils and take an inhale and an exhale. Let me know which nostril seems to feel like it takes in the most air. Good, and the other? Which nostril seems to take in the most air? We'll put the probe in your left nostril. I'm now going to attach the probe to the device. I'm going to turn the device on to sniff. The device is now ready. On the count of three, I want you to take a short, sharp sniff inhale. You need to keep your mouth closed. Are you ready? On the count of three, one, two, three. Very good. I'm now going to shut off the device and turn it back on to sniff so that we can do one more test. When performing the SNP test, you must wait at least 30 seconds between measurements. The device is ready. The test is exactly the same. On the count of three, keep your mouth closed and take a short, sharp sniff. Inhale. Ready? One, two, three. Very good. So this was the test uh, which uh, says that uh, if the proper positioning is there, then we can have a, a good functional uh, work of the muscles. So other tests are also, also there and uh, that is uh, 
one minute uh, sit to stand time up and go test 40 minute test uh, six minute walk test fatigue assessment test so these tests uh, are uh, being done in uh, one especially the one minute sit to stand test can be done after the patient uh, achieves uh, the proper ventilation and all that the vitals are stable and he is able to do out of bed mobility so if the subject is having icu acquired weakness then this is very much helpful and time up and go test time up and go test is that a patient subject stands from his chair then walk for one meter and then come back the amount of time taken in that sit and go and come back to the chair that is counted and if he completes in between 10 to 15 seconds then suppose that his, then we can consider that his functional uh, outcome is good in that and muscle work is proper good then later on we can proceed for a better uh, assessment of 40 step test six minute walk and then fatigue assessment that these tests are done and then when it is done then we should take uh, proper precaution because as in the video you saw that it was a normal patient so normal because no other such precaution was taken but at the, their proper precaution because this is an aerosol generating procedure so proper uh, precaution should be taken in order to test the functional ability of a subject then when uh, it is done we have to see that uh, through pulse oximetry that how is the oxygen level saturation if it drops will to three percent then by one minute sit to stand test or time up and go test or, or while doing the uh, 40 step on a flat surface surface and it goes below 90 uh, uh, of the oxygen saturation level then we should not perform very heavy activity and we can ask the subject to do very light activity in bed mobility only so that other functional uh, outcome or other muscles properties are main maintained and that ICU acquired weakness should not uh, progress for uh, some more uh, weakness should be there progression should not be there to stop that progression we can start mild exercise not with the other heavy exercises with the ICU acquired weakness so you can see that how this uh, time up and go test is being done the timed up and go or tug tests functional mobility to perform the test you need a chair and a stopwatch or a wristwatch with the second hand have your patient start by sitting on the chair feet flat on the floor one foot slightly in front of the other and hands on the armrests of the chair. Put a line on the floor 10 feet or three meters away. Ask your patient to stand up from the chair and walk at the normal pace to the line on the floor when you say go. When she reaches the line, she should turn around, walk back to the chair and sit down. Be sure to start timing on the signal go and even if your patient has not started to move, and stop timing at the moment she sits back down in the chair. While she's walking, stand between the chair and the line in case the patient loses her balance and you need to assist. Observe and note the patient's posture, width of the base of support, step height, stride length, arm swing, and path. When the test is complete, record the time. Also record whether the patient used an assistive device, and if so, what type. A community-dwelling older adult who takes more than 12 seconds to complete the tug is at increased risk of falling. So this was time up and go test, which can be also seen for the functional mobility and the subject who has been acquired weakness due to the uh, ICU, prolonged ICU admission, or we can say it post uh, ICU syndrome that is known as pick also so when uh, icu acquired weakness is there then uh, evaluation of exercises with the pulse oximetry as i have uh, discussed uh, with the previous slide if exertional desaturation according to exercise should be prescribed so it should be uh, according to assessment should be done and accordingly the exercise should be prescribed and the saturation level should be continuously monitored 
the proximal and distal method one method is also there uh, for testing of the functional ability and it is known as medical research council scale here what happens that six x muscles are taken uh, one of the shoulder of uh, muscle is taken and that is the shoulder abduction elbow flexion is there wrist extension is there hip flexion is there knee extension is there ankle dorsiflexion is there and it is tested according to the manual test muscle testing of 0 to 5 and one uh, muscle has been given the uh, 10 marks and when according to the your muscle assessment if it comes 4 then you can give uh, 8 if it comes uh, uh, 3 then you can score it as 6 so total 60 point is there and the score is 60 this means the subject is not having icu acquired weakness or the pick or if it goes below the 48 then it indicates that the subject is having the icu acquired weakness and he will and need some type of uh, rehabilitation and graded rehabilitation with the proper assessment of the subject so positioning is also important for the airway clearance nowadays the recent studies has also shown that the prone lying of the subject has helped him in getting out of the ventilator uh, easily or you can say the time taken is uh, less and the patient is having better outcome so prone position uh, should be there but uh, complication of the prone position should be seen that he should have be very comfortable he should not have any uh, any sore or anything so that uh, other complication may arise out so proper um, positioning is very important with proper cushioning and all that so this was uh, all about and i can say that uh, uh, before that uh, we as a physiotherapist should also be very very much careful in treating these patients we should take proper care we should know how to wear the protective equipment because that is very important if we don't know to wear the pro protective equipment then it is uh, will be becoming a problem for us so i will show you a video which was designed by our aims and you can see that how to wear our uh, protective equipments uh, right from gloves to headgear as well as the mask and everything so we can go this is a video of 10 12 minutes we can do it this is very important so we can see this video and get aware of wearing the personal protective equipments steps for the protection of our healthcare workers working in covid designated areas donning or wearing the personal protective equipment Examine the coverall suit for any damage, including tears. Start by wearing the leg sleeves. sleeves. And zip up. Cover the 
zip with a flap attached over the zip. Now sit on a clean chair and wear the shoe covers and pull them up till your calves. N95 mask like a cup in your hand with both the straps hanging out in the front. Place the mask on your face. Pull and wear the lower strap first, placing it below your ears. Then pull and wear the upper strap, placing it above your ears. The most important step is to check that there should not be more than minimal air leakage around the mask when forcibly exhaling. Now wear the hood covering the forehead and the cheeks. Now wear the face shield over the hood and ensure the fit. Tighten or loosen the face shield with the help of the screw at the back. Now wear the second pair of gloves. Pull them to cover the sleeve cuff and forearms as much as possible. are now ready to enter the COVID area. Doffing or taking off the person protective equipment must be done in the designated doffing area having red biomedical waste bins labelled separately for the each type of PPE. There should be two chairs labelled as clean and dirty, preferably made of plastic or metal which are easy to disinfect. It is very essential to perform each step with utmost care and slowly so as to not generate any aerosol. Perform the hand hygiene after each step. Take the help of the observer to check for any leaks or tear in the person protective equipment. During the entire doffing procedure, the observer must not touch your PPE. Inspect your PPE for any gross contamination which could be disinfected with the help of alcohol-based wipes. Disinfect your gloves with alcohol-based hand rub. It should be ideally dispensed from an automated system with the help of your body or by pressing the nozzle with your elbow to prevent any contamination. Sit on the dirty chair with legs apart. Remove the shoe covers by slowly pulling the outer surface, starting from the top and then pull them from the toes end. Try not to cross over your legs while sitting. Discard them in the red bin. gloves. Next step is to remove the outer pair of gloves. Be careful so as to not tear or contaminate the inner glove. Pinch the first glove on the outer surface at the wrist and pull it inside out. Hold this glove in the other hand like a ball. Now slide your thumb inside the other glove and remove inside out balling around the previous glove making it
Tighten the inner gloves. Loosen the face shield by adjusting the screw and remove by holding it from the back handle. Discard in the labeled bin. Now disinfect the inner gloves. First, slide back the hood by holding it from the top. Separate the zip flap and unzip the cover on suit. Holding the suit at the arms, slide it off the shoulder slightly. Then pull the suit from the side of the waist and roll your arms out one. Touching the inner surface of the suit, carefully roll out each leg. in the designated bin. Disinfect the inner gloves. Carefully remove the inner pair of gloves as previously described. Now wear a new pair of gloves before. Touch the exposed surface of the mask. Stoop forward and first remove the lower strap. Then carefully remove the mask by pulling out the upper strap. Now remove the last pair of gloves. Perform hand hygiene again. Now you're ready to exit the doffing area. Wipe your shoes on a sodium hypochlorite soaked doormat at the exit. So this was there and uh, I think uh, it was must be very helpful for you that uh, if, if, if you uh, work in the uh, your uh, clinic area or in your
done without touching any area of the body or without contaminating the surface, we have to remove the PPE. So for this reason, I am demonstrating how we have to put the PPE and how we have to remove the PPE. I am going to show you. When we come from home, we Hello, hello. Yes, sir. Go on. So this uh, you must have seen that how the important was donning as well as doffing means uh, wearing and taking off. And this is very important in cases uh, when we will be dealing with the OPDs or even in the OPD also. But uh, this level is not required. This level is required only for the COVID dedicated area and only a simple a mask covering of your eyes that is with the face shield or with your specs then a hood or you can apply the cap also and a simple gown a simple gown will be effective and some most important thing is the hand hygiene even you are wearing the gloves or you are not wearing the gloves when you are taking out the gloves you must have seen that how the hand hygiene has been maintained after each and every procedure whether you are taking out your mask that time hand hygiene is important when you are taking out your cap that time hand hygiene is important when you are taking your gown at that time hand hygiene is important so you have to be very careful with your hand hygiene and in each and every doffing or donning you have to maintain the hand hygiene so that you are properly protected because it is a very contagious disease and you may have a good immunity uh, your immunity level may be high but you may carry forward to your elderly or some children for them it may become deadly and this virus as the experts are suggesting that it is going to stay for a long so we have to live with this and we have to learn to live with this that's what this was the purpose behind this uh, talk so that everyone should be aware and take care in future for better healthy life. Thank you. Thank you all of you. Sir, you are uh, sir, audio. Unmute, 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 sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, very informative and very detailing. Uh, so very useful for students. Therapy students also and uh, the professional who is working in the clinical area. Okay. Uh, so, sir, aapka uh, jo support hume mil raha hai, uske baare mein hamare paas kuch sabd hamare kam par rahe aur hamara kad bhi thoda chota hai. Nahi, sir, bahut badiya hai. Aur isme chote aur bade ki koi baat nahi hai. Bas jo hai ki ham log समाज को जो है अपना जो भी दे सकते हैं दे वो हमारा उद्देश्य होना चाहिए करेक्ट समाज के प्रति हमारा उत्तरदायित्व है उसे हमें निभाना है अच्छी बात है दिस इज द टीम वर्क और ऑल पीपल खुद से शुरुआत करनी है और लोगों को समझाना है तो ही ये बात बन सकती है बन सकती है हां वेरी राइटली सेड सर अ टू ऑल द व्यूअर्स यू नो प्रभात रंजन सर हैज given a talk and he has described covid 19 what it is what are the symptoms how does it affect and what are the treatment options okay in the icu and then after the icu how the uh, assessment has been done and the what are the treatment options in a nutshell the main important thing that i would like to inform you to all that you know this virus okay once it enters into the body and affects the lung Okay, it uh, convert into the ARDS and then respiratory failures. Okay, comes into picture. Okay, most of the time alveoli collapse, eclectasis occurs. So, all the physios or the clinicians need to understand that this is a condition not only of an ARDS. Okay, followed by that, there has been a respiratory weakness. Okay, in which the assessment need to be done perfectly. And then you need to go for an inspiratory muscle training. Okay, so that is very important where the point need to be understand. So the fatigue assessment is very important in this case. And once the fatigue assessment is done, the level of fatigueness has been understood. Then 
inspiratory muscle training should be done thoroughly then only the person will be back in the natural normal particular physical functional fit and back to the normal life top on that one more thing that i would like to add over here we see lot many cases in the you know pulmonary rehabilitation area where the ards is occur atelectasis is occur emphysema is occurring chronic bronchitis copd is asthma lot many patients that we have seen okay there we are simply going for the pulmonary rehabilitation techniques and all every technique that we are you know going after it one followed by other followed by other whether the sputum is sticky unsticky humidifier nebulizer yeah. you know bronchodilator drugs then apt techniques acbt ad whatsoever the things we are going you know to go for a bronchial hygiene to make the chest clear in the icu so at that point of time one should understand that that patient is not affected with covid so difference is very important to understand that that patient is not affected by covid so we are casually going over there and treating the patient and coming back but here it is very important to understand how the covid occurs and how it penetrates into the body and what are the precaution is been taken for this and what are the steps process as the sir has showed the video what are the steps process that we need to follow to take the precautions as the expert suggested that this will be the condition in india for long period of time and we have to adapt our living process in such a way that for example tb we are living though the patients are there in the india it is also endemic it is also spreadable through droplets affecting the lungs and still we are living with the tb patients the same way we have to adjust our lifestyle we have to modify our lifestyle and then we have to get habituation of living our life normally with all the precautions in this covid 19 situation because practically if you come to know till how long you will be locked down the question is still remain the same so in that case one must understand that modify your lifestyle change your lifestyle take the precaution stay safe be responsible person for your own life for your own family that is what the main message that vn patel medical campus behalf of campus ceo all the faculty members i would like to pass to all the viewers all the people who are live on facebook listening to us only the one message that we will like to pass in near future we have to adapt our lifestyle to survive against this problem and being Thank as you, a healthcare you, professional professor. being as a healthcare professional we are uh, having more responsibility towards the society so yes. we have to follow that strictly so that uh, the subject the uh, society should follow because they look after us after all they are telling that we are the front line warriors healthcare professionals are the front line warriors and they are looking to up to us that how we are doing how we are coping and how we are living so they have the confidence to lead the life very confidently for their living or earnings whatever is there for their work everything and our role should be and we should the one thing i want to tell that we should not get panic we should be calm cozy even we get some news because it is a human nature but we should not show our eagerness or anything we should be calm we should study that and we should go further ahead and see what the agency or the experts tell about that and then pass on the correct message to the society because what happens what is happening nowadays that false information is being also passed havoc is being created that should not be there and we should be staying calm we should be exploring the knowledge we should be exploring the right thing right method to uh, build the confidence among the society this is the message we should give to our society yeah and so one more thing that i would like to add over here all the clinicians who is working right now in certain you know sectors like clinically what uh, prabhat sir said that if you are working in multinational hospital right now or uh, for example government hospital where you are getting the cases and you are treating and in such situation if you are getting a chance to treat that patient first of all mentally build yourself you are not going to you know get affected first thing first you understand that you are a healthcare professional you have to face the situation so don't fear psychologically 
mentally be strong right now so many md physicians so many anesthetists because ventilator is operated by anesthetists so so many anesthetists so many physicians icu intensivists they are fighting back right now okay and they are the savior front line savior for the people as the sir has given the statistics more than 1 lakh 50000 about to get maybe tonight or maybe tomorrow tonight okay so about to get affected but still the front line warriors are working right now so we all physios mentally be strong even if we get a chance to treat the case never step back never step back because there is a lot of psychological factors going through in mind agar mujhe ho gaya to meri family ko agar kuch affect hua to what will happen family may say no don't treat the case don't go to the hospital don't go out but let me tell you one thing the moment you started this course the noble course bachelor of physical therapy one must understand this is a paramedic course in which you have to play your responsibilities you cannot step back i repeat you cannot step back from your all the responsibilities so even if you get a chance to treat a case with all the precaution keeping the all the senses in your brain that what are the precautions and step process i need to follow keep all the senses intact in your brain with active or proactive brain with no hesitation go out there and treat the case without any fear and create a miracle and histories don't fear that is what the message that i will look to pass to all the clinicians all the you know the doctors right now physical therapist doctors who are treating or getting the case in the icus and you know they are calling the physiotherapy doctor please clear the chest please don't afraid of anything face the challenges and see beyond the barriers what is available for you thank you thank you sir does any students have any queries regarding the whole session or anything that uh, they want to clear it out they can drop the their queries in in the box okay students are quite clear they are saying no sir one query sir, is there is one query in the inbox after patient being fully recovered from the corona is there any chances of reinfection in future yes uh, uh, there has been a different strains of corona virus seen and around 1 to 2% of the corona virus has been reported that the subject who has suffered an earlier episode of corona virus are suffering again having that covid 19 features so the one the, the percentage is very low is there but it's low anybody else anyone else that uh, they would like to convey their message or they would like to ask something one of the viewers is uh, appreciating your lecture sir ah oh, it was fruitful amazing time thank you kunjal yes so at the end of the session we came to know about the conti covid 19 and physiotherapy perspective what all things we can do and uh, for further queries uh, you can ask to dr prabhat ranjan sir they can drop the messages also uh, they can reach by facebook they can contact us also there is the number written or there on the flyer so they can reach out to us also and they can whatsapp me also whatsapp number can be taken from dr mehul yes definitely so is there any query regarding this you can definitely ask thank you thank you so much sir once again thank you and thank you dr mehul dr thank you, sir. prakash sir thank, thank you, sir. you thank you dr payal thank you sir thank you sir okay thank you okay bye sir